Hey there, folks. It's your old buddy Gerald here, buzzsprout.com. So, today I want to talk to you guys about scale lengths and string gauges when it comes to your guitar. Now, in the last video, we talked about intonating your guitar, setting it up. This right here is my Blue Austin AU756. Okay. Um, so... Actually, my buddy Stone commented about wanting to change strings on his guitar about going heavier. Well, you guys need to understand, and I'm going to try to explain this to you a little bit. It does not matter if you switch heavier strings or lighter strings. You do not change the intonation. You just set it, it's set, it's there. So make sure everything is perfect and ready in tune, okay? So don't worry about trying to worry about changing the... Uh, octaves or the intonation or whatever um, but now when you're come when you're talking about string gauges well you really need to might want to really look into that especially to you older guys or to you folks that that if you might have arthritis is that the fact that it might hurt when you bend up on your strings when you bend up on the strings of your guitar it could hurt like the devil okay Especially with your fenders, um, which are typical fender guitars, whatever, are 25.5 inch scale length. So you'd want to use at least like a 9 gauge strings on that, which would feel like a set of 10s on a Les Paul. Okay? Um, but now, depending on the scale length, you'd probably want to go with a uh, lighter string gauge. Also to the point, and the reason is, what I use, I use 9 through 42s on all my guitars, okay? It doesn't matter if it's a Strat, Tele, Les Paul style guitar, like my Iceman. This is for you, James, my man. Boy, don't that guitar look so cool. Don't that guitar look sexy. <laughs> That's right. It's just, this is my IC120, man. Mmm. I love that guitar. I'm so glad, glad that I picked this up. $175. Are you kidding? <laughs> That's right. Man, it's juicy. It's amazing. Um, so, something like an Iceman or something in that nature with a Les Paul type of guitar, those will have, obviously, you guys know, shorter scale lengths, which are 24.75. Okay. Um... So putting a set, let's say you put a set of tens on a uh, on a strat on a strat or whatever strat telly whatever, okay, because Fender is the longest scale between Fender, Gibson, and a Paul Reed Smith. Paul Reed Smiths are about 25 inch scale, so they're a little bit shorter, but a little bit longer than a than a Les Paul. So they're a little bit longer, they're a little bit shorter than a Fender, okay. And we'll talk about how you measure the scale length so that you'll know. We'll talk about that here in a, here in a sec. But depending on if you have thick gauge strings, you're not going to get much twang out of it. Because actually what I would love to do is to have a set of 9 gauge elixirs okay, on, on here. You know, the 9 through 42s. But have a 40 from a low E string. That way I can have even more super. And then somebody will say, well, Gerald, why not just put an eight, eight gauge strings on your, on your guitar? Well, here's another thing, folks, that you guys got to understand that you guys might not ever thought of, that the, the uh, shorter, take like a Les Paul, like this Iceman here. This has got nines on it. This thing bends really great. You can bend a half step, whole step, whatever. But if you go to thin, if you go too short of a gauge on a Les Paul, something with a 24.75 scale length, it's going to get to the point that when you bend up on that string, it's going to, it's going to be too, it's not going to be tight enough that you're not really going to. So putting eight gauge strings on this, on something like this, will kind of feel like seven gauge. So do not, I mean, it's going to feel too slinky, if you will. It's going to feel to the point it's stupid. And it's just going to be redundant. But putting a set of nines on a Les Paul will make it feel like eights. But to the fact that it's just not going to, when you bend that string, it'll go ee. You know, it'll go, 
it'll have all kind of range of motion. It'll have all kind of pitches in there. So do not put eight gauge strings on your Les Paul. You know, putting a set of eight, putting a set of nine gauges on a, uh, putting a set of 10 gauges on a uh, Les Paul will make it feel like a set of nines on a Fender. Okay, because the scale is everything. The scale is going to determine, you know, what is comfortable for you. But here's another thing. If you get to 12 to 13 gauge strings, dudes, you might as well just get you a bass guitar. You might as well just get you a bass guitar. Oh, here's one of my, here's one of my faves. 1996 PV, PV Fury bass just sitting there looking at you in the face, wishing you had one. And you probably do. Um, so, but... If you go with 12 gauge strings on there or whatever, you're really not going to be bending anything. I mean, you might as well just use that thing for a slide guitar or whatever. But, but the thicker the string, the more bass that you're going to have. So for me, I am a country picker. I got to have, you know, and then plus also having an EQ pedal or having a where you can turn the bass off on your amp or whatever and then have just your frequencies, you know, on the amp to kind of. You know, to kind of adjust to how it is or whatever you like. But see, that's the point of playing the guitar. Understanding playing the guitar is about how you play it. But I'm here to tell you that if you go too thick on your strings, you might be disappointed. So, tens or nines for me. Okay? So, if you can bend a 12-gauge string on a, on a strat like that, more power to you. Okay? It's really hard to do because you don't want to hurt your fingers. You know, especially with you guys that might have arthritis in there. You know, put a set of nines on your Les Paul or whatever. That way, shorter scale length, and we're going to get ready to talk about how you measure for that. Okay. But the longer the guitar, then probably the shorter of string. Okay. Because, like I said in the last video, so changing your strings, going to a heavier gauge or whatever, it's not going to affect... The, your intonation because it's already set leave it alone you don't need to bother it any, anymore okay once you set that 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 all the, that that'll be the only thing you'll have to do you won't have to ever have to worry about that again so how do we measure the scale length to know what scale length i have Gerald? well it's simple y'all let me let me let me explain it to you okay so you take your tape measure so you take your tape measure. Now, like I said, most Fender guitars, most guitars, strats, or whatever, have the 25.5 scale length. Okay, we know this. But how do I know that? Well, we take, go from up here to, to our nut. So take your tape measure, go from here to the nut, around to the 12th fret, and measure that. All right, so measure that from your nut to your 12th fret. Okay, and then you should get a number like 12.75. Or 12.375. Okay. Well, then you just double that. Because on a Les Paul, like I said, the scale length is much shorter. Okay. So, that would be 20, 24.75. You divide that by 2 and you'll get 12.375. Okay. You got to know your math about this, people. So, you start up here at the nut, right up here where I'm pointing. And go take it down to the 12th fret. Measure that. Measure it that way. See? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay? So, 12.375 or on a Paul Reed Smith, which is 12.5. Okay? So, 12.5. Okay, a little bit bigger. Double that on your fenders. And, and you can also talk about, because um, you might have a guitar that might have a 24... 24.62 inch 24.62 inch scale okay which is shorter than a Les Paul so just measure out that take it to the top of the nut up here and then just take it to the 12th fret and then double that number what you get and there it is that's how you measure it see it's really easy isn't it it's all about numbers but once again be careful of what strings you may think that you like 12 gauge strings but you just got to be careful, and that way, if you want to bend, you can. There's no way in the world that you'd be able to bend on 12, 13 gauge strings, man. You, like I said, you might as well just get a bass. Okay, there's one thing else I was going to talk about. Oh, 
Speaking of that, while I'm on the subject, we need to talk about room temperature and taking care of your guitars. Now, the biggest important thing is, is people will buy a guitar and they'll hang it up in their room or whatever, not really caring. It just looks good on the wall. But you got to have your guitars climated, climated in the right climate. Basically, you just can't hang them up in your room and expect you can't you can't you cannot hang the hang these up in your room or whatever and call it good. If you have multiple guitars, if you have many many guitars such as I, then or even if you have a couple or whatever, um, you really need to accl acclimate your room. You need to make sure that your room is in the right temperature. And the right humidity level, yes. Especially those of you that live where there's low humidity, you need a humidifier. Especially in the winter time, the temperature outside changes. So, a good rule of thumb is to have your music room or your bedroom or whatever. If you have two or three guitars in there because you don't want them to go bad, you don't want them, you just don't want to tear them up. Especially guitars with nitro finishes. If you don't keep that Gibson Les Paul in the right temperatures and the right temperature humidity, that nitro finish is going to crack. Trust me when I say this. Very, very, very important dudes and dudettes. Very, very important boys and girls. So the temperature that you should keep your room is between 70 to 78 degrees. And if you have too much humidity in your room, then you need to get a dehumidifier and, and set it. So the proper humidity for your guitars is between 40 to 55 percent humidity. That's all you need in 70 to 78 degrees. You just don't hang them up on the wall and then just forget about it and let the room get a whatever temperature you want and think whatever it is. Especially if you're gone for a week, you better keep that. You better keep that stuff going because you got to take care of your stuff. See, this is one reason why that I like nitro. I mean, that I like poly polyurethane finishes. This guitar needs to be clean. This guitar is dirty. Okay. Um, so you have to, uh, make sure if you have a nitro guitar, okay, then you'd need to, uh, make sure that it stays in the right humidity. Otherwise it's going to crack and it's going to look like garbage. Okay. Unless you like that vintage. That's why I like polyurethane because you don't have to worry about it at all. You just put it on there. It's just basically just clear urethane over that. Okay. So clear coat finish is the best okay nitro not as much because they're more temperamental they're more picky so if you don't take care of your guitars and put them in the right temperature or you keep them in the wrong temperature don't ever keep your guitar outside okay um, bring your guitar in okay you know that is unless you have a humidifier on the bus you know or get you one of the uh, or get you a humidifier to put in your guitar case okay a good rule of thumb is to have a, a little grain of is to have a little bag of rice you know like a little bag of rice in there to absorb the moisture you know to you know so let's get you one of them humidifier cases to put your guitars in okay um so that's pretty much it so what else was i going to talk about so changing your strings to heavier gauges do not have to worry about setting the octaves but you're going to have to worry about the scale length. Like I said, measure from the nut to the 12th fret and double the number. That's all there is to it. Nothing else, nothing else, whatever. So, like I said, I just wanted to come in here and uh, give this to you guys tonight for another lesson. And, yeah, so that's it. Um, so, I know uh, my buddy Stone asked, talked to me about the uh, adjusting the truss rod. And we'll talk about that here in, uh, within another video or two, okay? So you guys just keep um, paying attention to my channel, to these videos, because I'm going to get these for you and try to make you guys a better musician, as well as taking care of your stuff, man. So, like I said, just because you have your guitar hanging on the wall or whatever, you need to make sure that you have them in the right temperature, okay? Too, too, too much you admit, because your guitars need to drink, okay? Um, so that's it. So there's, therefore you do not need to oil your guitar because that's why you have a humidifier. Ah, okay. So, and for those of you that live in a, uh, 
you know, like winter, you have seasons, winter, fall, summer, spring, or whatever, then you're going to need to adjust your temperature in your room. If you keep it at a constant or whatever and make sure, you know, 78 degrees is perfect. 50, 50, 50 40 percent humidity is good. You just don't want to go above or below. You don't want to get too, you don't want to get it too dry in here. So that's pretty much it. This is just what I wanted to talk to you guys about today because I want you guys to understand this and maybe you'll pick up a few things. I don't know, but I'm just here to tell you about it, okay? Uh, the same way with uh, bass guitar strings or acoustic guitars is the lighter gauge strings, whatever. You guys just decide whatever it is that you want. And I need to, get, I need to hang up a bunch more guitars up in here. Okay, I need to get my button gear here. <laughs> um, so... But if you have your humidifier going, you know, a wet humidifier, okay, the, uh, the heated ones or the uh, small ones, I got, I, got one, I got one down there, okay? Um, so definitely you got to take care of this stuff. And like I said, depending on your, your gauge of the length of your guitar, adjust Put your strings on accordingly. But like I said, this is just to help you guys, okay? Not to make you go out and buy different strings or whatever. Just because, well, Joe said I need to go out and buy 10-gauge strings. No. By the way, I want to show you guys something. This right here is the Granddaddy Elixir Strings. That's right. Elixir Polywebs. Okay? So these are the big, so, so these are the big boys. These are the daddies of them. I use 9 through 42s. Okay, uh, and I have, and I have many, many of these. <laughs> All right, so, um, so that's pretty much it. I just wanted to let you guys check this out or whatever. And if you guys have any more questions, then I will be doing follow-up videos about this. But this right here is our second video. I was like, yeah, I don't really need to talk about that. So your scale links and all that stuff. And you guys can do this. Oh, yeah, I also had a video... From a buddy of mine that says, well, Gerald, what if I cannot adjust my my uh, my uh, action? What if I can't adjust my octave screws or set my intonation with my uh, went with, with my bridge? It just won't work. Said they said that the E string goes is is okay, but the rest of them can't. Well, I hear you. So what I'm so what I do is if you look here on my PV Fury base, okay, you see that you see these right here. Um. This whole bridge is crap. So the thing is, is you might, you might have rusted screws in there, or the heads are uh, warped. The Phillips heads. So like I said, what you better off doing is to get a new bridge and put it on your Strat. Okay, and we will be talking about how to set up your springs and block your trim and all that stuff. This is a little mini series to help you guys, okay? Because I care about you guys, man. I want you guys to take care of your stuff. Um, so if that's the case, besides my big six string base, the whole bridge system is screwed up. It's rusty. It It's wore out. I mean, it's 20 years old. Somebody, I mean, just depends on, you know, taking care of your stuff. And then, then again, now and then, if you play your guitar, you might have to regularly have to upgrade stuff. Just like I did with my Glary Strat, I'm going to be putting new strings on here. Okay, the OptiWebs, obviously, because that's what I use now. Um, so, get you a new bridge, and I'll show you, and I'll show you how to put that on, because new new bridge and the sustain block is very important too. We're gonna, to, like I said, we're gonna cover all this in videos, so you guys just stay tuned, because I'm not done with y'all yet. So you guys take a few days and digest this, if you will, because we'll come back and we'll do follow-up videos. I want to take my time with this for you guys, all right? So, yeah, anyway, so your old buddy Gerald here, folks, buzzsprout.com, and I look forward to seeing you guys, what you guys have to say, all right? Later, folks. Okay, like I said, I'm just here to help, like, share, and subscribe, because I know this stuff. Um, and we still got quite a few ways to go here. All right. So you guys take care. Bye-bye, folks. Have a good night. And I'm going to sit over here and chill, get me some water, and upload this to YouTube, okay, and Facebook. All right, so once again, folks, your old buddy Gerald here, Gerald's Music Entertainment, Gerald Ray's Music Entertainment. I'll talk to you guys later. So if you guys have any questions or whatever, 
Um, yeah, we're also going to talk about setting up your pickups. Very important. So go back and digest this video for a while. I know this is a little bit longer, but this needs to be talked about, okay? All right, folks. Take care.